I'm actually going from the, for the fourth decade. There are a lot of things in in this business you could only know if you have experience. Absolutely. I shall sell in I was selling boat ride. <laughs> Let's talk about you getting into business outside of Soka. What do you do outside of Carnival well, season? Well, I'm in business long time. When well, I'm going inside, I see Marshall inside this studio. Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> oh, God. You could have tell me the man here. The world is expecting Iowa and Kess. Stage gone bad. COVID come and shut Everything, Everything done. done. How did that yes. make you feel in that time? So tsunami. I guess what are your lasting impressions? What would you tell the people if you were to think back on that big moment of you performing at tsunami? Well, I just want to tell the people that is the best event in Canada, Caribana. You understand? Wow. Right. If Thank you're you missing for that. that you missed the best moment. Then it better you didn't come. <laughs> that is the moment of Caribana. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, DJ Busby, a.k.a. the Tsunami Boss. And from the time you hear the voice, you know it's only up from here. Ladies and gentlemen, this will probably be the biggest podcast we will ever do. And if not, one of the top three for sure. Because of the magnitude of the conversation we're about to have today. Now, from my neck of the woods in the soca industry, I am known as the Tsunami Boss. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody who is acclaimed as the Water Lord, who has produced some of the biggest water events, water fet, wet fet songs you can think of from the history of soca music's inception. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have none other than somebody who has been in the business for over 40 years. Years, four decades. He has been singing music longer than I've been born. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Welcoming to the Up From Here podcast, we have none other than the legendary, the big man in the business, the mashup artist, and the water lord himself, Neil. I were George. Yes, yes. Well, well, well. <laughs> well, 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 yo. I don't know how to take the 40, but you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> if I make 40, I'm grateful. So I'm grateful that you said 40. So no. I know that's the new target, but it's really 34 this year, okay? 34, got it. Yeah, 34 <laughs> this year. If you get that bad right. Got it, understood. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, that is literally so how. So I'm actually going from the, for the fourth decade. You're and going for the fourth decade. Successfully make three. Yeah. So we go in for four. Got it. And 34 years in the business, you started singing soca the year I was born. Yeah, that's 1980. 89. 89. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so here we are today, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Up From Here podcast. We have many things to speak about. And I'm telling you guys, this will be a historic conversation in soca music. Now to get things started, not many artists even last sometimes past their first song. So for you to last 34 years in the business, I have to applaud your resilience, your talent, and your hard work ethic that you've presented to Soka Music. We have to thank you as a community because the, the work you've done has not only been influential and energetic to the entire Soka community, but you've helped a lot of people on your way up. So before we even get to those amazing accomplishments, I want to start at the beginning of your journey. I were George. How did everything start? Well, I started um, in a family, a very rich family, mm. and I call them rich because if you're if you're good in quality, you're rich. Yeah, you understand. <laughs> yeah, and my father was a very um, very 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 pleasant person. We living in a village in Point Four Ten, uh, just on the outside of Point Four Ten, called Mora. Mm -hmm. If anybody know what Mora is, Mora is really a is really a, a tree, you know. Right. So, you know, in school, they used to heckle us and call us more a bush bug. You know what I'm saying? We living in the jungle, you know what I'm right. saying? And my father was one of the get through person in the village, and he wanted better for the village. So he used to take us to all the little village around Point Fortin to participate in bet, Best Village. Mm. If I say Better Village, you will understand what I mean. But right. we say Best Village where all the communities used to have a little show, and then we the judges come and the judges, and then... It have a final day. We go to Port of Spain and mm -hmm. see who is going to win Best Village Champion for the year. 
Right. And then my father used to keep the drums by this house and he used to keep the box guitar. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. So through the guitar being in the back room in the closet, that is how we learn to play guitar. <laughs> through the drums being downstairs in the storeroom, that is how all these kids learn to play drums, mm-hmm. you know. And all my family they come out playing something. You right. Know? Devon, Naya, Kits, Hudson, Eric. Mm-hmm. Everybody come out could do something in culture. Amazing. You know? You've come a long way in terms of the amount of competitions you've entered, the amount of submissions to soca that you've done in your life. One in particular that I want to touch on that I think the world would appreciate this story. Mm. We need to hear the story of how you came up with the I Were Dance. <laughs> well, the I Were Dance, you know, every time I sing in and I want to get a vibe, yeah. I sort of lift my foot up, you know? Yeah. And then the people start to say, the people start to actually do it and say, look at doing the Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I say, okay, well, that's the Iowa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just that simple. Yeah. Like when I, I used to say, like, if you realize, I say, well, well, well. Yeah. That, that well, well, well. And this was, the, was That was on the foundation. That was 80, 80, 89, 90. That all them days are saying, well, well, well. That was the next question. How you come up with that? Yeah, because that when I looking for vibe. Uh, so I used to do the kick up my foot and then say, yeah. well, well, well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this came naturally. Yeah. That, that was, nice, yeah. nice. And the, the I Were Dance itself, how did you construct that? By incorporating, I guess, your favorite songs or the biggest songs at the time? No, I used to just do the I Were Every band chorus. Oh, nice. You know, we got us a war song I sing and when the brass play and I do the Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about your history in Soka Monarch and the competition field. Right? You've entered all these competitions with obviously the hope of winning. You've won many. Let's speak about, you know, your journey in Soka Monarch and what suggestions you have for the next generation who's gonna enter that kind of competition. Well, when Soka Monarch came, Soka Monarch has already come as the vehicle to take soca music upwards, you know, because of the person who was really in charge of it, which is William Monroe, you know? Okay. And sitting with him and hearing what he tried to do, and then back in the day, the only time they could have seen us, because remember, we entered into a Calypso era. Mm-hmm. Everything was for Calypso. Yeah. It had the Calypso monarch, it had the Calypso Kaiso Fiesta, mm-hmm. it didn't have nothing in place for Soka. So mm-hmm. when he started the Soka, who wouldn't support it? I mean, started to work with him. At that time, the only time you can know who I is mm-hmm. is if you see Soka Monarch tape. Hmm. You remember I didn't have no social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very big determining factor. Right. So the only time you could see a live performance with Iowa is in Soka Monarch. So yeah. to me, Soka Monarch was a night to go and get a video. Yeah, and that video would circulate on YouTube. Circulate, so, and that's how you got work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So regardless of win or loss, we used to defend Soka Monarch would be live. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> win or loss. So how did that feel now that it's out of at least the Trinidad market? Well, on the end of the day, you know, it kind of, I kind of lost for words because right. I mean it hurt me so much to um, See where Soka Monarch, which is the largest audience, mm-hmm. end up, you know? Yeah. But all my life in this entertainment, you know, we see we lose some and we win some. And i very op- optimistic that if they do the right thing, Soka Monarch could come back better than before, you know? A lot of people say that with the Soka Monarch, it is a very big push for the music as well because now you're forcing an artist into a creative space to try to win a competition and the the crowd the audience feels that right and you've been known as somebody who has dominated in that space but something very important that we need to highlight here today what? is that you've been robbed in that space too I, <laughs> and I you're, never, so, you're talking about it <laughs> well yeah I, that's I'm, I'm using your lyrics yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah. well I never look at it as rob. Got it, got it, got it. You know, because where I come from, yeah, you can't rob me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood, you understand? understand. We're grateful, you know, regardless how it come. Yeah. But um, all that is part of the art form. Yeah. You know, I mean, that year, people think I should have win. Yeah. And then I saw an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and the next year, I come back and sing. Yeah. If you know that rob me last year, put exactly. the two in the year, so I don't win somehow. Exactly. <laughs> You know, so I win the people and you take it, you know. But for what Soka Monarch 
contribute to the industry and to my life. Them can rob me. Yeah. You know? And, and something that I, I definitely took from, you know, I've watched your previous interviews online on YouTube and something I saw that you've said is that Soka Monarch, there is no Soka artist in particular that wins. The people win that competition. And once you have the people's vote, that's how you will get to win that spot, that Soka Monarch spot. And it's very important for artists to know that you have to go to all the shows you could go to. Market yourself, market your name, get yourself out there in the space That's so right. that people know who you are That's right. and what your song is. Now, the Soka Monarch competition, as we've discussed, has been a very helpful space for a lot of artists, new or old, right? Mm -hmm. You as Neil Iwood George, right? What have you done to boost the next generation and help out the, the upcoming artists get to a better space in the soca industry? Well, um, what soca is, mm -hmm. is what we make it to. Mm. You understand? And right. We come through a lot of generation, mm. you know, of soca, and we manage it. And if you realize, soca music is the only music industry yeah. that every artist could be backstage at the same time and nobody don't have to have no security guard. You know mm. what I'm saying? Good point. But you don't have to have no detail. Yeah. Because that's how we build the industry. You understand? Soka is love. Beautiful. You when a man have an event mm -hmm. and he have a responsibility to manage 10,000 people outside there, he don't want to have to manage Two artists in the backstage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So we manage our situation and we grow soccer on principle. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Everybody know the rule, everybody know the order. If a man have a problem, you know where to say your problem and I'm going to fix your problem for mm. you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, at the end of the day, money is the root of evil. Yeah. Right? And once business with money, with all of them, men are differences, you know? But the good thing is that soccer music have. Do have some godfathers <laughs> that you could call and say, hey, you have a problem with this fella across here, hey, you have a problem with that fella across there, you know. Yeah. And a man already come out and to a talk sometimes with a small, small issue and, you know. Mm -hmm. And we was able to build soca and then he had order. And the reason why you all come and all I could still get you is because we built it in an order. The foundation. Foundation was strong. Right. The qualities of the foundation was very strong, and that is why we're here still. I love it. Now, speaking of foundation, who are some of the people you looked up to on your come up? I look up to all. To all. Everybody Powerful. made a contribution. You know, yeah. I come out of Kaiso, you know, I come in Calypso, mm -hmm. and I was the only young artist on the road to him, yeah. together with Sparrow, mm -hmm. Mighty Juke. Kitchener, when he come out once a year, I had to make sure I get on that trip because, <laughs> yeah. you know, that is. You know, his foundation, yeah. you know, and then Super Blue. I used to open for Super Blue for years. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All in That's my father's favorite artist ever. All in, when I come to Canada here, you know, as yeah, so James had produced the show, I come to open for Super Blue. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, those fellas grew me up with a certain standard. Mm. So I didn't have a choice more than to pass it on to the fellas who come in after me. Yeah. And that is what, that is the reason why I play an integral role in most people's life because... I had, to I had to educate you. Mm. I had to let you know, listen, this is what it is. Yeah. This is what I meet. And I'm passing on the blessing to you. And you pass on the blessing. Awesome. That's and beautiful. that is the reason why we're here today. Yeah. And that's something I definitely notice about you. You take that moment as many times as you're on stage to say, big man in the business. I've been in the business this long. But you have to let people know sometimes because the, these days, attention spans are short and people forget quick. <laughs> well, <laughs> you understand the way they behave when I go and say that. I don't think they forget. No, they, <laughs> they, they but forget. the the accolades and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, forget. in in your history and you, I guess, in these competitions, who would you look back and say is maybe one or two of the people that gave you the biggest run for your money, <laughs> that gave you the most trouble to go head to head with? Well, to be honest with you. Well, there's multiple people. Yeah, okay, exactly. I'm in the competition for so, so many years. Mm -hmm. I make the most seconds in the history of Soka <laughs> Look at that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I rang with Super Blue. 
You understand? Then mm-hmm. when Marshall come, it was me. Anytime anything come, anybody come, yeah. it's me that had to fight with. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yeah, Super Bowl era is me had to fight When KMC was it, me had to fight with. Yeah. When Marshall come, it's me. When Bungie come, it's me had to fight with. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I fight with everybody, but I say Bungie era was very difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie Marcus era was, that was another era too, but you know, I get through that. Uh-huh. You know, but Bungie Galen time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was difficult to beat Bungie. <laughs> difficult to beat that fella. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, we and s- I like that plan to beat him. I say, boy, he going to come up with them fire. When I don't sing, my water go wet down all the fire <laughs> thing. When I don't sing, you know, the fire thing lighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a lyrical assassin, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. time was he time was rough, you know. But mm. uh, you know, I was able to get through he time and then go on to Marshall. Yeah. And I right, me and Marshall was tough, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I only beat them for them with experience. Good, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah. You know, there are a lot of things in in this business you could only know if you have experience. Absolutely, you and know? that's yeah. a big gem for everybody. Yeah. That doesn't just apply to soccer. That's yeah. a that's a yeah. big one. I had to use experience, mm-hmm. yeah, in order to defeat him. Yeah, because yeah. he has a lot of his own experiences too. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you yeah. know, they have a say. You know, if you look carefully, <laughs> and you can't take nothing from him. Marshall Montano is the superstar of soca. Yeah, nobody can take them. From. No period. That There's Marshall, no denial. We are Kess. We are Bungie mm. Galen. We have their show. We are Nyla Blackman. Mm-hmm. We are KMC. We are plenty of superstars. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, I am the head. <laughs> and I make no apology for that statement. I am the head. I am the godfather of the game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. <laughs> now, I were, we've talked a lot about soca music, and that's a, a huge passion of mine, obviously. I've made it a very important part of my life and a big part of my life. But like your lyrics say in Bubble, mm-hmm. everybody in the world wants to know after carnival, yeah, what a soca artist, artist does do to, to make money, <laughs> to mine his family. <laughs> they keep asking me. So, so let me tell them, them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them I said, Marshall selling rum. I was selling boat <laughs> ride. <laughs> we talk about soca and people see you as a soca star. Let's talk about you getting into business outside of Soka. What do you do outside of Carnival well, season? Well, I'm business a long time. And it was Soka and business. I started with um, buying car and giving men car to work on the road taxi. Wow. You understand? Yeah. Then I had a little ghost tree era. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was a real tough time for ghost tree, but I get through that era. Then we move on to real estate, you know? Mm-hmm. And then we move on to radio station, then after we move on to the boats, you know, mm-hmm. and we keep moving. Keep moving. And we still moving. And, but that's amazing for you to be so hands-on with a lot of very important, even around the infrastructure of the carnival. Mm-hmm. As you said, the radio, mm-hmm. that is a huge thing, especially in previous years, right? Yeah, well, I wanted the radio station because I wanted soca music to be the prominent music among of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Got it. So I get the radio station to put the radio station to play so can guys. Mm, you understand? Know yeah. So we get you with that quick. Yeah. That that mission was the easiest mission I ever executed. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Know so before you know it, people was soul and that. Let's keep in radio because that's a huge aspect, right? Mm-hmm. And get in the, the ears of the people more or less. Getting into that space, you said it was the easiest, but were there any challenges? No, I mean to, to execute a mission mm-hmm. was easy because at that time people wanted soca. Yeah. You understand? Right. And they just didn't have a way to get it. So when the point of the session and they said a place obviously the punk soca in the head. And in two years time we don't jump up three, four percent on the survey and start going, you know? Mm-hmm. Until we were able to add to the radio session, then we had some political shows, we had yeah, some yeah. talk show and we end up coming up with a balance, you know? Beautiful. And it, it definitely is something that, you know, even myself coming from Toronto, Canada, mm-hmm. that's a genius move to not only have the radio station, but you've been somebody who's been innovative and took the radio platform and put it on things like a YouTube, a Facebook, and amassed a whole new audience, not just from Trinidad, but now, respectively, the whole world. That's right, you know, because when I launched them, those YouTube page and them, 
and that was in 2014. Mm. Nobody never want to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> so they say, my company say I was a madman. Yeah. <laughs> I, say, oh. I say, all you need to see into the future, okay? Uh. Right? We're moving radio from radio that they could hear and radio that they could see. Mm. What we did with the radio station, we move it from audio ads to video ads. When a man gave me an ad, people on the page could see it. You understand? Mm. And if you're listening to the radio, you'll hear it. You know what I'm saying? Brilliant. And we were able to make radio station, you know, our radio station, you know, grow to a humongous audience. And then the technology start changing. Mm. And then we recognize the normal survey they used to do, they mm. will not be able to do that anymore. Yeah. And the only survey will be a person who have actual numbers. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, look right? at that. So we were able to grow our station into actual numbers and 90% of the people who advertise with us, mm -hmm. when we send them the statement at the end of the month, they'll be very pleased because yeah. it's not a promise that we know. <laughs> <laughs> we know these people listening because we can see the views. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I plan that since 2014, you know, when wow. the cameras came in the country, custom they even know where I was. Mm. They didn't even know what they thought was house camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think now you could safely say, Ten years later, you were very right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <obviously. laughs> now the radio space and censored music. It ties into the conversation we were having just before the podcast. Mm -hmm. And again, watching your previous interviews, something I saw that was powerful that you said is that you focus on making songs not only for this generation, but their mom, their grandma. You were making songs for their great grandma. Yes. And a big part of that was you creating music that's palatable to everybody. So um, censored, like no cussing or, you know, a, an attention or awareness to the fact that everybody is listening to your music or you at least want to put your music in a space where everybody could hear it. Right. Talk about that and how, why it was important for you to have well, awareness. Well, in order for you to succeed, mm -hmm. you have to well be in the church. Yeah. You understand? And, you have to be protected, mm -hmm. you understand? Yeah. And you you want to grow your family in the church, you know? And you cannot, when you run yourself in a problem, go by the pastor and say, the pastor, pray for me. Yeah. And then after the pastor, pray for you. Yeah. You're on a stage singing some slackness. <laughs> you can't do it. Yeah, it's not. You understand? Know yeah, yeah. When you're running trouble, you go by the pastor. You say, oh, God, pastor, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Pray with me. <laughs> and then after that now, and if you understand entertainment, mm. if you're not grounded properly, you understand? Know yeah. You're not praying and you're not in the church, you're not going to get you. Hmm. I can tell you that right now. You understand? Because <laughs> culture is blessed by God. Yeah. You understand? And the only how you're going to get you is that you have to be protected. Mm. You understand? Because the, the, evils of, the evils of this world is well, is well within yeah. the space of entertainment. You know what I mean? Right. So I kind of more or less grow with those qualities and that's why you see I listen to those certain things and then you know he's a kind of funny fella with what I sing if you listen to all my lyrics yeah. <laughs> I'll be very careful what I sing yeah. you know Definitely. what songs men bring in the studio for me and I say I can sing this song I know yeah. but you gotta change those lines <laughs> <laughs> now as you said that this was another question I had it seems to be something that's a, a common trait with a lot of artists have you ever had a song come across your desk? You turned it down and then looked back like, shucks, I should have taken that song. <laughs> you, know, you know, if I tell you something? It was a, that never happened. Never? Never wow. happened to me. Never. So everyone you, you got, you were supposed Every, to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That never happened. Nobody never sent a song to me. And I said, no. <laughs> and the song was a big song. Good. One thing I know. Yeah. It's a big song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing you can figure out. Yeah. yeah. That's good. You remember, 90% of my music, I write them. Mm. If you're okay. a writer for all the years, oh, you ain't going to have a good song. Yep. Especially when you've written a bunch and you could pick out which ones yeah, were the best. Yeah, I never, I know nothing. Hmm. When stage going bad came, I was like, I know that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for setting me up for our next question. Yeah. Stage yeah. gone bad. Now, I want to put the people in this period of time, right? How many years before 2020 was it that you won a Soko Monarch or a Road March competition? 
Well, I run a won a road march competition in two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. Wake up in the morning and you wow. just realize that me say carnival come back again. That's crazy. You know, and then we come back and then I write one for my brother a couple mm. years after that. I want to see your right hand. Wait, that, Show me yeah. your. Trinidad, yeah. <laughs> Trinidad, <laughs> where my people. One of the yeah. one of the biggest soca songs ever. Yeah, period. Up to today, up to up today, to up today. today. Any stage I want, I ain't chop. I just select yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <Yeah. laughs> I love it. Now we talking about twenty twenty people, right? Or sorry, twenty two thousand. Fast forward now to twenty nineteen. You catch it. You would cuss. Yeah. You guys win it with Stage Gone Bad. Yeah, well, actually, we had a song. Um, this 2020, my apologies. We had yeah. a song in 19. 19. 19. And we had a plan. Mm. But the plan didn't go to plan. You're right. Because remember, Marshall was winning. Right, right. So the plan was, you remember, the year before that, I had Savannah. Right. And then Marshall ended up coming out with, he and Super Blue collaborate and do Kingdom. Right. Right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Why not, why not? I was there that year. Kingdom, remember, yeah, yeah. Right? So the next year we plan, you know, we had stage one bad mm-hmm. and we was coming back for him. <laughs> but we had a we had a plan A. Yeah. So the whole thing was to sing Road March back and now. Uh, right. So sing about eighteen, mm-hmm. right? And then after we sing about eighteen, then job stage gone bad. And wow. Oh boy. That end up that whole year end up in a bacchanal match. <laughs> singing about me. Boy, the whole day we almost had abandoned the whole ship. <laughs> so stage gone bad couldn't go jump up in that. So yeah, we yeah. Keeping stage gone bad for another year. Amazing. You know, and while we was holding stage gone bad, we don't record, cast record everything. Yeah. I got a call from Skinny one day. Oh, yeah. yeah. He say he passing through the island mm. and he want to see me. One rule we just play by as entertainer. When an artist call you, you have to return the call. Yeah. You know, say, there's no way wrong that. I didn't see it. No. That was good. So now you turn the call to Skinny, tell me about he passing through... And you have an idea, check him in a studio, <laughs> send James. I said, all right, I'll come. And nowhere does go. <laughs> you know? No, he didn't tell me about the studio. He uh, said, check him in St. James. He yeah. sent me the address. Yeah. When I reach in St. James now, you tell my boy, you know, let me be straight with you. Because he never taught about that come. Yeah. You understand? Mm. Let me be straight with you. It's not me alone here, but we already call it a vice or two. I say, why? Right, push open the gate and I go inside. <laughs> when I go inside, I see Marshall inside the studio. Oh, my said, oh, God. God <laughs> oh, God. You could have tell me the man here. You set you up <laughs> bad, yeah. He said, I go, I run back outside. I start to play like I go in back by my car. Marshall run. He said, oh, God, George, come back, man. We didn't want to work. I said, all right, come. Mm. I come back in. And he say, he tell me what he was planning to do. Mm-hmm. That was with Kong Shell, you know? Yeah. And on the end of the day, I can't tell an artist, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, regardless of what it is, I had to try to work it somehow, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, So as much as that stage gone bad, you know, they played Kong Shell for me and asked me if I'm interested. You know? mm-hmm. I wasn't seeing road much. I not seeing nothing, you know? I just, my money, I didn't, three decades, you know? Yeah. Maybe three decades, you're mature. Yeah, you yeah. just want to enjoy yourself. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. So they play the conch shell for me, you know, and it's had a vibe. I had one problem because I know I was singing, you know, mash it up, shell it down, and turn it over. Mm. I don't know I don't sing in a shell. Yeah. And I'm man coming to sing a yeah. shell. You know? <laughs> oh, gosh. So, so much say, politics in that, jeez. So, yeah, my shell now. <laughs> I say, well, I will come back. Yeah. Yeah, my shell now. Skinny. Don't study I well. <laughs> if I were leave here, we're not going and see you again. <laughs> if I were if I were in voice, no, that is a dead dog. That's not going oh to happen. Oh my gosh. I say, all right, let me voice it. Yeah. I voice it one time, you know? <laughs> and then that's when the action start. Mm. I studying how to tell my management. You know? Yeah. But I really couldn't tell my management. Because mm. if I tell my manager, yeah. Then my manager had to tell Cass, yeah. but if my manager ain't know, he not indicted, so he ain't owe nobody no fee. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said, in order to protect my management, yeah. you understand? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't tell my management. Understood. You know? So when it started to get heat up and thing, and it started to come down, my manager called me one day. He said, George, 
you voice that tune with the boy and them. Mm. I say, I have somebody on the phone, I'll call you. Back. <laughs> and I just try to stay away from answering the question, you know? Yes. And the way that was going on, I just know the only person who I really know was Chavez, Chavez Well. Mm hmm. And one day we went to uh, an event tribe had in Shagaramas right. called um, Hydrate. Mm. So my manager telling Travis Will, he said, Boy, when we drop this tune, we are clean up all you. <laughs> yeah, Travis Will telling my manager, What tune you talking about, boy? <laughs> Your artist have a collab with Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> Real problem. I play, I didn't hear. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I leave one time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, that year ended up being the greatest year of my career. Oh my gosh. I went first mm -hmm. in road match. I went second in road match. Wow. And I went first in Sokama. That's incredible. That was 2020. You know what I'm saying? As much as it was rocky. So this, this is where we're going to get into. And I want to get into your mind yeah. during that time, right? As you just said, this is possibly the biggest year of your career. Mm -hmm. So now it's literally booking after booking. The world is expecting Iowa and Kess. Mm -hmm. Stage gone bad. March, I think. Yes, March the of COVID 2020. <laughs> COVID coming, shut everything, everything down. down. Close down <laughs> so many, many people now would turn and say, shucks, Iowa finally win this, the, the road march back. He back with another monarch. This and that second yeah. place, and he he, look what happened. Yes. He had to stop. How did that yes. make you feel in that time? Well, boy, listen. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. you understand. It was a international issue, and people was dying. Yeah. I can't watch me. True. I can't see me. I never see me in that <laughs> subject. You're My right. pain in the COVID time is how much people was dying yeah. and how fast they could have find a solution. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I never feel no pain. Yeah. You know, I never feel no pain. You and the monkey was good. Yeah. <laughs> I, never feel, I, never, I never even study that. I, I never even study like selling and say, boy, how much I could I make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, man, once you have life, you will always make. Very amazing perspective. Very you amazing. Know? And that, you know, regardless, that would have been a traumatizing time for many a people, right? You finally get into a space, like you've been in this long time, as you've said, yeah. but certain people, that might have been their big moment. You know, a lot of people felt that. They finally got their hit song that year and COVID come shut everything down. Well, look how much I had. Exactly. So you were in a fortunate position. Yeah, look how much I had. Yeah. I mean, I had, I had super years on tour. <laughs> yeah. And I did not, I didn't win no road match. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. that didn't really, that didn't really move me. I, I was in pain. Yeah. Because... So much people who I knew mm -hmm. died. So the job, job, feel no pain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we're about halfway through the podcast. Want to remind you guys to make sure to hit that like button on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Most important, make sure to share the podcast. It's best on the YouTube. You get the visuals and the audio. We're also available on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, make sure to drop a comment if you're enjoying the podcast. Now, before we get into any further questions, I pulled up my weather app. And in the next 10 minutes, it's about to start raining. <laughs> I wish I was joking. If you guys can see, I'll try to zoom in on the camera. It's crazy. And the water lord is here. And... I've heard that that's a rumor, but is it true that you could co command and call water down from the sky? <laughs> well, in my life, uh -huh. in my life, you know, um, 18 times mm -hmm. I show up on a stage to perform. Yeah. And just as they announce me, mm -hmm. rain started fall. Oh, my gosh. You know, that happened to me 15 times. 15. And then over the last three years, and it happened three times again. Yeah. So it's a thing with me and, and the blessings, mm -hmm. you know, and then I learn to to understand when rain is coming and where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah. Like I go to a show and then I will see the rain coming from up in the east here, so, <laughs> and I will tell the DJ, play one more song. Yeah. <laughs> play next song. So you time it. You are timing wow. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have this thing down to a I science. Trust, well, I tell him, okay, I already know. <laughs> time I take the migraines out of all. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I understand, especially in Trinidad. Yeah, I understand it. I actually actually see a cloud. Yeah, like a time at when it's gonna reach. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. 
You have more experience than some weathermen out there. <laughs> now, a big question I want to ask you, you know, obviously you're here in good spirits, good health, and you're not stopping really foreseeably anytime soon. Do you see any more water songs in your future? Well, I don't know what the future will bring. Mm. I mean, I just doing music. If something good, I will sing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever if it's water, whatever if it's yeah. paint, whatever if it is, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, so... I don't know. I can't say what the future is. Got you. I know I have none written yet. Yeah. Because <laughs> you never know as we done here, man could watch it podcast and say, George, have a water tune for you. Yeah. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it could but be the biggest I one. Love, I would love to have a water song every year, though. Yeah. yeah I have two songs. You know, a roadmap song and a water song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, with that, the water songs you have had, yeah. your personal favorite, what yeah. would you say? Trinidad on fire. Yep, mine too. Tobago on fire. <laughs> Trinidad on fire. The, the people want what? I don't know what that song have now, boy. Right? Yeah. But listen, that song have a life on its own. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. But when I wrote that song, I was actually in Tobago, you know. Yeah. I, me and a Tobago, they had already vibed that tune. You know? Wow. And this Tobago young guy, we was by, right in Bonacorde, you know, a place, people know it, it's a little green so there's open late hours of the morning. There's have sell bread yeah. and chicken. Yeah. Right? So I'm a car pack up on the side and there's a little Tobago young guy come and check me. He said, George, let me vibe a tune now, boy. Mm. Let me vibe, boy. You know, long I want to vibe a tune in And me and he start vibing it in this so, one. And that's how we come. Trinidad on fire. <laughs> Tobago on fire. Trinidad on fire. The people, are you saying Trinidad? He's saying Tobago. Oh Trinidad, Tobago. And we vibe a tune right there, so. Yeah. And we make that tune. And from that night, I just know that tune is going to be a monster. You know what I'm saying? And again, these are one of the songs that decades later, you could yeah. play at any point. Yeah. Uh, well, almost any point in the party. Yeah. But you yeah. get what I'm saying. It will still do damage as yeah. if it's a fresh song. Yeah. And... That's one of the songs that have been integral to the brand we're definitely going to talk about just now. <laughs> but before we get there, right? And we have to talk about Tsunami. Before we get there, I were George, as you said, 34 plus years in the business, going for the four decades. Mm -hmm. Through this time, you've had to, as anybody would with that kind of longevity in the business, you've had to reinvent yourself, right? I want to go through the stages of I were George. And we've spoken on a couple of them, like the I Were Dance, Stage Gone Bad, these type of things. But you reinventing yourself throughout the years, what are some pivotal moments where you've had to say, let me reinvent myself at this point? Well, every time I run myself in trouble, mm. then I reinvent myself. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? I always run myself in your career, you go run yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like, yeah. I was doing Calypso. Yeah. And then one time, I don't walk up in my head and then go and sing a song about Rash Shorty. Yeah. Think it over. I run yeah. myself in trouble. Yeah, because yeah. I did, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're casting about the greats. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Some of the lines in the tune, you know, mm -hmm. work against me. So I had to reinvent, I had to reinvent myself. Yeah. myself you understand? <laughs> yeah. So cool. then I come back out and I start back over again, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you look at me, if you look at the history, you know, one time they used to call me the boss. Yeah. It was Iowa George. Mm -hmm. Then... <laughs> then, then I went to uh, the boss. Then I went to, uh, you know, the king at the dance and different things. Every time I change something, it's because, you know, I sat around with a favor with the people. Mm. You know, anytime I run out of favor with the people, you have to change something. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I did that four times in my career, you know? Mm. And that's why I could sing to the generation now. That's know? amazing. Because... You know, my music never changed. Yeah. At, at one time, I, I was trying to change my music. Mm. And General Grant one day called me and he said, George, don't let them people them frustrate you. Know? Yeah. At the end of the day, regardless of what I do, they had to come back to your thing, you know. So yeah. hold on to your thing. Yeah. Like in the Groovy Soka area, you know. You remember when the Groovy Soka come and yeah. no power used to play at all, mm -hmm. at all, at mm -hmm. all? And Grant, he come right there. He said, boss, don't let that thing thing. You know? <laughs> it go in and come back by you there. And I just hold on to my corner and I stick to my course. As you should. And I left to see the day that, you know, um, Groovy Soka have its place. But Power Soka have its place too. And once Power Soka have a place, I have a place. Yes. And, you know, you've done a, a fabulous job doing that over the years. And, again, the crowd today can have a full appreciation for who Iowa George is on that stage. Because you don't look especially when you're doing your thing, you don't look like you've been in this 40 years per se. Like you still have the energy as if you're 20, 30 years old sometimes. Well, yeah, I remember it's 20 years of doing this. I yeah. want to keep yourself fit and look at me. 
Yeah. Look at my size. Look yeah. at my hand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I ain't have too much muscle. I ain't have too much meat. I ain't have no yeah. fat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can when move you around. Remember, when you said a girl, you don't want to damage your body parts. Mm. You understand? If you get too heavy, mm-hmm. then you damage your knee. Yeah, true. You understand? Because you remember you jump on the stage. Yeah. And if you put too much weight up here, then you jump your knee. Yeah. So what I'm saying, you have to know what you want in life and you have to work towards what you want. Got it. You understand? Yeah. If you know you want longevity, yeah. then remember, your health is your wealth. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Now, people, this is probably the big moment, the biggest moment of the podcast where we have to talk about Tsunami. I must say, it's the greatest intro I ever get on a stage in my <laughs> life. <laughs> it's a national. Boy, the intro was so great until I pirated it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, the man do so. The man give out 40 cases of water. The man only saying, this artist can come just so. And you can see he did it genuinely in his heart to give his fans. So this, this goes into... The actual tsunami when you finally touch the stage. Mm-hmm. I were George now comes and performs. So I see I were go on stage and we did that whole mm-hmm. intro you talked about. Mm-hmm. And I'm backstage, but I'm chilling. I'm not thinking nothing. And I just remember I looked to my left yeah. and I see this guy dressed in all blue, head yeah. to toe. Mm-hmm. I look, I said, that's Super yeah. Blue sitting right there in my fit. Yeah. He came with Iowa George. Yes, that yeah. Super Blue is my dad's favorite artist. Yeah, so yeah. I video call my dad on the spot now, showing him Super Blues in, in the fet. Mm-hmm. At that point, you had called me on stage. Yeah. And he said, like, Where's Busby? Busby yeah. come to the stage. Right. I want to see if this new generation knows Soka too. Yeah. Boy, I, I don't know. We level down the place. We level down the place, but something you don't even know. Yeah. When I got up to that stage, yeah. because of all the headache and running around I was doing that whole day. Yeah. The moment I got up and you said, Busby, I want you to sing some of my songs with the people. I want to see the next generation do this. Yeah. Boy, my whole leg cramped on me at that moment, you know. Oh my Lord, I didn't even know Exactly. <laughs> so I, I want to see you. And I'm holding my leg. I want to. <laughs> and I'm trying my best. You had saw me in St. Thomas mm-hmm. on the side of the pier and everybody was waiting to get on the boat. Right. And I hear somebody call me, Buzz B. So I look, I look. I see Iwer in the back. Iwer look at me. He said, come. Come here. So I come to Iwer. And I'm wondering what this man about to tell me, you know, because we in St. Thomas, we in a fet. We about to go back to the boat. Iwer said, Buzz B, listen to me, huh? And this is a year after that show we're talking right, about. Right. He said, Buzz B, listen to me. It's been almost a year since Tsunami. I have woken up every single day since that show Mm. and thought about how amazing Tsunami was. was. That was one of the best wet fets I have ever been to in my life. That's right. Mm -hmm. Until a pirate intro. (laughs) (laughs) But to hear those words from the water boss, from the water lord. When I try to explain it to my my DJ, what I planned to do, he can't understand what I do. I don't go on, I don't call it and go online and yeah. get the, 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 the event yeah. and copy it and send it to him and say, listen, this <laughs> intro is what I want. Yeah. <laughs> because I was changing my show to start back to open with the water song. Yeah. You understand? So once I started to do that, I need him to understand because you can't play the song too fast. Yeah. You have to know everybody had to have a water in their hand. Absolutely. So when then the man talk and the MC talk and yeah. give out the water, I say you want all that to give out water and when everybody have water, then you press play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have it down to a science, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 so yeah. tsunami, I guess. What are your lasting impressions? What would you tell the people if you were to think back on that big moment of you performing at tsunami? Well, I just want to tell the people that is the best event in Canada, Caribana. You understand? Wow. Right. If Thank you're you missing for that. that, you miss the best moment. Then it better you didn't come. <laughs> that is the moment of Caribana. Wow. And I, honestly, I would like to see this event all over the world. Yeah. You understand? And if you ever need an investor in Trinidad, <laughs> or you know, a good friend. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> right? But the event and how you, not just the event, how you do your thing. Yeah. Every promoter had a style and other way. How you do your thing mm-hmm. is how it has to be done. Right. I think the whole kind of water fit. 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know what they're doing, water, everybody go call there, but yeah. how you do your thing? Mm-hmm. It's the way it's supposed to be done. And Thank I you. like people who doing water fat to go on YouTube, search Busby, you understand? Mm. Search Tsunami and see what he do and try and see if you could pirate some idea. <laughs> Not too much, please, it, because we already have enough knockoffs it, as it is. It, 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 don't <laughs> no problem, it don't have no problem, you know, following and all. You understand? Know, Following, I yes. I come to the conclusion in this life. Mm. Being second is not a problem, you know. I've mm. been second for the most years. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what? Being second is not a problem. Following is not a problem. The only problem I have in this life is getting left way behind. Mm. So following our man who have a good product, that ain't no problem. You know what I'm saying? Amazing. So I just want to tell people, go and take a peep. Yeah, <laughs> that is huge, and I thank you very much for that. That means the world. Mm. You wouldn't even understand. And you heard it from the Water Lord himself, ladies and gentlemen. Iwer, thank you very, very, very much for this time. Yeah. I know I know. even you want to get into the, these kind of spaces, right? The podcasting and whatnot. Well, not really. It's not no. like if I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And I, I cannot believe in the old people say, mm-hmm. I still tongue. Keep a wise head. Uh, you understand? So I just try to avoid talking too much because yeah. often you have a lot of people don't understand, you know, and mm. and social media is so vicious now that I and you might form a sentence that will take two lines from the sentence and copy it back and try to make a confusion. And you know what I mean? And I I I am I'm, I'm I'm one of the veterans of the game, you mm-hmm. know, and I just try to keep myself in a kind of way where I just yeah. try to stay out of trouble. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. that's the reason why I just try not to talk too much. Right. You know, I just only talk in special moments like this. You right. know what I'm saying? But to say you see me up on social media talking, talking, talking now. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's gonna happen. No, 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 no. That's gonna happen with me. So the future of Ivor George as we close out, what are your plans now moving forward? to get to that fourth decade and beyond? Well, I mean, right now, you know, I is more business than entertainment, mm-hmm. you know? So I plan to come back on the road next year, yeah. right? And um, to do a series of show. So once I come back on the road, then you will see more interviews. You mm-hmm. understand? I'll be talking, you know, because Iowa is an entertainer. Yeah. And entertainment and Iowa goes together. So until you see I'm ready to come on the road, then you'll see more talking. But I'm more in trying to set up, you know, finish up my empire because I have certain things that I wanted to achieve in the life, you know, which is I want to have 10 income stream. You understand? So mm-hmm. I'm working on four right now. Great. You know, once I finish, I should finish four more income stream this year. Mm-hmm. Once I finish the four income stream this year, then I'll come back on the stage. Amazing. But right now, I'm just doing guest appearance. Yeah. You want your place mash up? In 15 minutes, call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And as we close out, you know, a funny thing, we've done a lot of episodes on the podcast, and one of our better episodes that was well-received was Maisel. Maisel, yeah. the sound master. Yes. And I had a distinct conversation with him about who would he suggest to be on the podcast. He said, look no further than I were George. <laughs> yes. He said, I were George is the person you need to get on this podcast because the stories he has, yeah, you need yeah, to share that. Yeah, yeah. And with that being said, as we close out, I were, I just want to give this to you here. This is a tsunami care package. Very nice. For our 2024 season uh-huh. so we have a lot of little tsunami goodies inside that bag that's right for you to take okay, there's a, oh, there's the a big cup. yeah the nice big one you can so, get the small one so too. this is what i'll be drinking in yes All right perfect let me see what we have in this bag. what else we had in there show them let give them a see, little unboxing see, see. <laughs> what we have here that's an umbrella hat oh, that is for in, in case in, ca- in, case, <laughs> in case you in decide case yeah. you don't want to get wet <laughs> In case, yes, in case, which I don't think you will want to be in a party like that. I don't want to get wet, but just, just in case you don't want yeah. to get wet, you have the umbrella. You have a little umbrella here, yeah. And boy, the plan for me today, I went yeah. blue and the umbrella in blue. Oh, it's going on your head, yeah. Oh, my goodness, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? I Very love nice. it. Let me see what we have again, yeah. A few more little things. Let's go inside. Oh, this is the. You guys, some, some the cover. Yeah. All right. 
cover now. You see, and they all cover they here. all change colors like this right. when the ice and, and drink is in it. Right. Changes to blue. And your drink is yeah. with a straw, right? <laughs> and then what we have here? The lanyards. Tsunami Ooh. lanyards. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Just a little swag yeah, so to send you back to sure Trinidad. Everything in it? All right, no, yeah. no, no. There's other stuff still. To go in it. Yeah, because I were is performing right. at Tsunami. So you guys will be seeing this right after Tsunami. Mm-hmm. I were would have already mashed up the stage. Very nice. Everybody put a bottle of water in the air. Put your water in the air. Put your water in the air. Put your water in the air. Let me go. One. We gonna go to two. Two. We gonna go to two. One. Two. Just imagine. So I just wanted to do. Let's have a little <laughs> zipper here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what you do, you put your cell phone in a plastic bag. Yeah. And you put it in this little <laughs> zipper pouch right here. So to make sure that you're with your iPhone. Advice <laughs> advice from the water lord, ladies That's and gentlemen. Right. Yeah. I were. Thanks for having me. Thank you so Thanks much. You. I really appreciate you yeah, and everything yeah. you've done. Thank guy. you for. You're the good guy. You understand? Know, Thank God you. God blessing you. Mm-hmm. And you just need to just go forward. Let's yeah. go. Just deal with positive energy. You're you know, absolutely man. right. Was in lesson at the end of the given day. I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah, it have something called favors on the book. Mm. I just want somebody to do me something. You know, if somebody do me something, that is an opportunity for me. Yeah, <laughs> to keep a favor on the book. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't know when that favor, a favor on the book is like a fixed deposit. Mm. You understand? Every year the favor does worth more and it's worth more. You understand? So sometimes somebody will do something. It's better to focus on keeping the favor. Mm. You understand? Right. Than to fight with the person. You're right. Because you don't know the next thing you see the man rolling with drink. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? You see him over with Jay-Z. You understand? What I'm and you know you have a favor. Yeah, with yeah. You. you take your favor one time. That's true. You understand? I build a fortune on favors. Hmm. You understand? I don't know. All of I try to explain to people favors in the book. Favors. Keep a favor in the book. A lot of people don't understand the value of a favor in the book. Hmm. You understand? I could come in Toronto right now and I could sing anybody I call and I tell them I want to work. They go say yes. You know why? Because I have favors in the book. Mm. Because sometime in the past they might have to do an event too and they might not make and they come by the hotel with a sad story and I say, oh God, stop your head. Behave yourself. <laughs> Don't worry, we go work it out in the future. Yeah. But nobody know what the future is. And this, I think, is one of the biggest lessons from that experience you were talking about earlier. Yeah. You know a new saying? cat in the game wouldn't give that kind of wisdom. Yeah. So you have to understand favors. Just remember people that tell you, keep favors in the book. Favors in the book worth more than money. And leave all of that. Amazing. Amazing. Legendary. Historic podcast. The Water Lord and the Tsunami Boss linked up and had one of the most historic conversations in soca music and i want to thank you all for being here listening to this and enjoying this conversation big up everybody all the up from here listeners this is the up from here podcast once again make sure to like subscribe comment and share and we will see you on the next one i were we'll see well, you well 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 <laughs> see you in tsunami boom